Uh, good evening, East Brunswick. Uh, my name is Liti Aramati. I'm here from the Friends of the East Brunswick Environmental Commission. And I'm very happy to um, have with me uh, David Wheeler, who is the director of the Edison Wetland Association and the author of the pretty new book uh, called Wild New Jersey. Hi, Liti. Hi, Thanks. David. Nice to have you here. Great to um, be here. We don't really think of New Jersey as being wild. What's in the book? It's uh, well, you know, that's a good question, and that's one. Uh, I spent a year traveling around the state, going to all the different outdoor destinations, and, and enjoying many of the nature activities across the state. And, and that was a question that I, I was asked quite often: is wild in New Jersey? Where's the connection, other than maybe going out on a Friday night to one of the bars near Rutgers? Um, but it, it, it turned out that even though I, I thought I knew a lot going in about just how much New Jersey had to offer, we were so far from the stereotypes of you know the typical New Jersey stereotypes of the Sopranos and Jersey Shore. Uh, it turns out New Jersey actually has an incredible amount to be proud of as far as our biodiversity, our wildlife, and our outdoor activities. David, this is very unusual what you're doing. How? What's your background? How did you get to looking at wild things? Well, my uh, my background is certainly very unconventional for for getting to do this as as part of my life now. Um, my background is actually I earned an MBA from uh, Stern at uh, New York University, and. Um, from there, I, I started working for Edison Wetlands Association, uh, which is a nonprofit working across the state, um, really doing a lot of great environmental work and with a lot of local communities that are suffering from things like pollution and uh, contamination. Um, from there, I uh, ended up writing a column for the Star Ledger on nature in this part of the state, in in uh, Middlesex County, and which you know is an area that most people don't associate with nature. Um, and and from there, it really just just started uh, inspiring me to look further around the state and you know I, I was so amazed at, at finding so many hidden gems locally that that the state kind of compounded that and one neat uh, experience for me was um, that maybe in, in, in some way inspired me in the beginning to, to start looking more at the outdoors we have in New Jersey was uh, commuting into New York when I was, I was working in Manhattan commuting through the Meadowlands and, and looking out the window at a place that had always been written off as this industrial wasteland with nothing positive to offer, you know, Jimmy Hoffa stories and landfills was, was pretty much the extent of the reputation. And yet I'd look out the the window, um, you know, from the, the train car crowded with commuters and, and see a hawk perched on a branch or a muskrat swimming down a channel, dozens of turtles and herons and egrets lined up along the, the ponds and channels. And it was just such a different experience between what I was told should be out there and what I was getting to see with my own eyes. So that was something I, I think early on that just made me say, I, I got to get out there and explore this a little more. That's great, and you'll be you'll be coming to uh, East Brunswick Public Library to talk about the book and about wild things in New Jersey on uh, February second. That's right. And. Is, is, is East Brunswick wild in any way? Well, it, you know, one of the uh, neat things, I've, for the, the past year I've been giving lectures and holding these events around the state, and um, at, for all the different audiences, one of the places I've emphasized, uh, believe it or not, is East Brunswick. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that, as, as, as the book also explores in, in two different chapters. East Brunswick uh, is, in many ways, it's kind of a prototypical suburb, and um, on the surface, it may not jump out, at, like you mentioned, it may not jump out as a particularly wild place. And yet, East Brunswick has, um, not only does it have still a variety of landscapes, but it has people working uh, to study those, to enjoy those, to engage the public in uh, events such as the Salamander Crossing. Uh, that is an event that has just, when I've told people about that across the state, about East Brunswick shutting down the road and uh, for certain nights, Beekman Road for certain nights every uh, spring, and more, more impressively, I think, getting you know upwards of 100 people coming out on a cold, rainy, wet, <laughs> you know, March night, uh, and kids, families alike, um, it's it's pretty impressive, and, and people are amazed, and, and that's really a tribute to what East Brunswick has to offer in terms of its its leaders, its citizen leaders, who really value their township and, and value what we still have in the in the environment around us. 
it's, it's really great to know that the word is out about our salamanders because actually they're friends of the Environmental Commission. We chose as a logo uh, a child's hands holding a salamander. Excellent. Because I think that really expresses what, what we're all about. Well, and, and that's a great choice because it, it's one of those creatures that is really a magnificent creature. And, and I know you've mentioned that at events with, with you know kids and families, you see a brightly colored salamander, you might, if you didn't know better, you might think it's from the tropics somewhere and yet right here in East Brunswick we have you know hundreds of them and in between them and the spring peepers and you know some of the other creatures even the creatures like moths that I know uh, East Brunswick's David Moskowitz is studying and and promoting over the next year uh, these are all initiatives getting people familiar with creatures that they might otherwise take for granted or not even know they're out there it's actually amazing we get kids and families coming to our moth nights and when people hear the word moth, they think holes in their clothes. Right, right. And, and uh, you know, pests. But they're really, some of them are as beautiful as butterflies. That's right. And, and, it, and it's such a neat ex experience. I uh, brought my own children there to a, a past event. And uh, it was, it's just such a fun experience being out. First of all, being out on a summer night. Unlike the salamanders, the moths use the, the warmer weather for the most part. Um, but being out there and, and uh, the creativity that goes into attracting the moths for, for the families to enjoy looking at, uh, you know, between things like lights, between putting up uh, these rum and beer concoctions on the trees, painting them. It's it's fantastic and it works. And uh, and really the kids, basically of all ages, experience the benefits right on up to grandparents who, you know, you see them there and their enthusiasm is no less than the, the grandkids they're with. So there's, there's two chapters in the book about these two events. And I just, I just like to mention that um, there's a lot of information about those events on, on the Friends website, friendsebc.com, including some recipes for moth bait. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, so what other places are, are in the book that are in our area? Well, what's neat is that uh, in central New Jersey, we, we, we are in a unique situation, not just with, across the state, but really nationally. Uh, one of the things I was amazed to find out was that no other state in the country, uh, contrary to our reputation, no other state has the amount of activities outdoors huh. that you can do the diversity of activities that you can do within a short drive that New Jersey does, uh, especially in the location of East Brunswick. Within an hour and a half, maybe two hours at the most, you can get to everything from the mountains in the northwest part of the state um, or the Palisades uh, across from New York City, these jagged volcanic cliffs. You can get to Cape May, which is arguably the best bird watching spot in all of America. Uh, you can get through the, the pine barrens. You can get through old farmlands and caves, and you know just about every habitat you can imagine uh, within a short drive. Um, and that's one of the things that's really fantastic, not only about New Jersey as a whole, but especially this area. As a, also as a resident of Middlesex County, uh, you know we tend to get overlooked because much of the county is has a lot of sprawl and a lot of that typical uh, you know, highways and strip malls and whatnot. And yet, even hidden within that, we have a pretty extraordinary array. Of wildlife, things like bald eagles and seals and river otters that you can that you have a shot at seeing on any given day. And you also have a website, which is in a uh, it's a blog. Yes, yes, we have uh, we have a, a news blog called WildNewJersey.tv, which uh, brings news about four or five different stories every day on, on wildlife and nature in, in New Jersey. And then we also have a, a book website, WildNewJerseyBook.tv. Oh. So not to confuse anybody, but uh, those are the two two websites which uh, should be able to get any uh, audi audience members quite a bit of information. So you'll be visiting East Brunswick, like I said, February second and telling more stories about wild New Jersey places to visit. Absolutely, absolutely. I will be there and um, and for my event, one of the uh, fascinating things for me has been over the course of the uh, the 50 plus events across the state is just what a great response the audience has given um, to, to just hearing the positive message about New Jersey. And, uh, we, we certainly know enough about the negative, but to hear about some of the positive things you can do outdoors and, and some of the real differences that folks are making in places like East Brunswick. So I encourage people to get out of the mall and into the woods. Exactly. Sounds good. Into the woods and, and uh, at least on, on February 2nd, uh, hopefully they can come meet us at the event. Excellent. Now, I know we have a copy of the book at our public library, but if people are interested in purchasing a copy. Uh, it's, it's it's available on Amazon, also the book's website, wildnewjerseybook.tv, and then it's also available in, in most bookstores, most Barnes & Noble and uh, independent bookstores have it as well. 
Excellent. Thank you so much Excellent. for Thank you. talking to us and coming to visit East Brunswick. Absolutely. Thank you.